Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online, and we're going to be doing another tutorial. This time it's going to be on an Ungor from my Brayherd or Beastman army. Now, these weren't ready in time for the tournament. I had to take an alternative list, but I decided to at least get some of these painted so that I can play some games with some different units. I've got 20 of these to do in total. The rest of them have all got bows, banners, and other things like that. But this is the one I'm going to be painting, which is the Musician model. Now, I am going to be doing multiple skin tones again so this is going to be the grey version of the young Gore, and it's quite a basic paint job I've, I've tried on purpose to make these ones faster than the other ones were to actually paint so this is using no more than three colors for each area so three colors for the skin and then putting a wash on at the end which is not something that I would normally do so we'll go through the actual painting process I'll pop up the paints in just a moment so you can see what I've used and the products that I've used and hopefully this will be some use even if it isn't a Bray Herd or a Beastman model that you'll be painting Okay, so the whole model has been primed with Rhinox Hide, Games Workshop Spray. Black will work fine, to be honest. I did brown because I thought it'd be easier, but it didn't make too much of a difference. And I'm using some Raphael brushes. These were sent to me by Ralph Hummel. So I'm trying these out because my GW ones failed on me. So I normally try and get Windsor and Newtons, but they haven't been doing so well either. I've had a really bad patch. So um, thanks to Ralph for sending these over and helping out. Uh, the other thing I'm trying to do with this video is just put the wet palette on the side as well. So just let me know what you think about that, whether it takes up too much room. I'm not sure about the quality on the camera. I think I, I still need to try and find a better quality camera, but hopefully this is good enough. Right, uh, actual painting, Mechanicus Standard Grey over the entire model. And you can see it's, it's majority of the model has been done with this colour. It needs about two to three coats just to go over properly and make sure it's not thick and chunky. And then we're going to use Dawnstone and we're going to do all of the highlights on the raised areas of the skin. So you can see on this dude, he's, he's worked out a little bit, he's got some, some abs. So I'm just carefully putting on some thinned down Dawnstone onto the top of his abs. And I'm painting it in, I'm holding the model on its side and I'm painting straight lines so that I get a little bit of texture on there at the same time. But I'm just making sure I leave some of the Mechanicus Standard Grey in the recesses. When the Dawnstone dries, it does darken down a little bit so it looks brighter when you put it on. But as with most paints, they, they darken, they dull down a little bit when they start to dry. So just be aware of that and don't be too worried straight away. Now, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it in this manner. I would normally do like a base coat. So I'd put Mechanicus on, then I'd wash the model. Then I'd do the highlights onto it. But in order to make this faster and to do armies to a much quicker level basically to get them done i'm doing it in this method so you'll see the wash at the end it darkens and dirties the model it blends some of the colors together but it definitely is a faster way of painting and batch painting these units so it is worth trying if you like the end result then it's something to go for but uh, it's not my personal favorite way of painting so the final highlight for the skin is administratum gray and we're going to do this in a similar way to the, the Dawnstone, but it's almost like an edge highlighting style. So we're going to go around, we're going to start with the face and just painting the, the top of the bottom lip, the top of the cheeks and eyelids and nose and all those sort of areas. Anywhere where the light would hit first, uh, or you know where the light would be beaming down, we're going to try and make it a little bit brighter using this Administratum Grey. And we're going to do the same thing for the abs and all of the muscle areas, just to make them a little bit brighter. So these brushes, are, they're actually really good for the, for the price. They're cheaper than Windsor & Newton brushes, but you can see they've got a nice tip on them. They did fray a little bit. I don't know if, again, I've just been unlucky with those, but uh, they're definitely better than the Windsor & Newtons that I was using. And this is the Raphael Zero, size zero brush. Now I'm just turning the model around. As I normally do, I put my models onto the cork and pin them on there so that I can easily just tilt these around and paint in straight line, lines. So my right hand is on the desk and it's, it's flat on the desk. So I don't really move, I don't shake at all. And my left hand, I just basically paint everything with the brush really quickly and more accurately. So definitely try bracing your hands on the table and moving the model around rather than your hands to get the straight lines. But you can see I'm just going around all of the muscle 
on his arm and I'm just painting around it and I'm just sticking this administratum grey on it and making it a lot brighter. And there's nothing fancy about this, it's literally just thinning the paint down with a little bit of water. It's on the wet palette so it stays damp as well, it's not drying up very much. Uh, I, use, I didn't use any more than the first bit of paint that I put on the palette for the entire model and I did a few after this as well. So that's the grey done, it looks quite nice, you've got the the abs and the, the muscles are all standing out and we're going to start onto the blue now and we're using Cantor blue for this. This is a colour that I really like, I'm not too keen on the highlight colours that GW recommends, they, they do the Elatoc blue and Hoeth blue and I'm using them because that's what I did on the uh, the rest of the gore, so the bestie gores in the army had this blue. But I think there are some nicer blues that I would probably use instead of this. So see what you think. If you like it, use it. If not, switch it for something else. There's only a tiny little bit of cloth on this ungore, which is just covering his groin area. So it's just a little bit of blue that we're putting on here. It's not a major part of the colour scheme. And that is also to match the zinch part of the army that I was teaming up with. Because I was with Patrick with his zinch. So I needed a bit of blue in the army. The next highlight is a Latoc blue, a Latoc blue, I can't even say it, Eldar blue. <laughs> and we're just going to do a layer highlight on this. So there's a couple of folds in the cloth on this, and I'm just going to paint these with this colour. And I'm still using the same size zero brush. It's the equivalent of a size one in different brush ranges. Uh, they're definitely a slightly different sizing. I don't know, you know, a size zero is definitely not as small as a normal size zero. So if you're going to get these Raphaels, get a different size that you're than you're used to. So if you normally paint with a size one, it's a size zero. Right, Hoeth blue now, and this is the final highlight for the blue. This is again just like an edge highlight. I'm just going to go around the edges of the folds that are on this cloth. Nothing too major. I'm going to paint the uh, get the paint as thin as possible so that it just very nicely goes onto the model here. And then we're on to the next colour, which is bone. So this is quite a large portion of the Beastman army. They've got a lot of bones and skulls and ornaments all strapped over them in different places. So I've used Zandri dust for this. Uh, the other way that I would normally paint bone is using Rakarth flesh, but we've gone for Zandri on these just to make them look a little bit more worn and, and sunburn. So we're going to paint all the little teeth which are strapped around his waist area. He's got a giant horn as well, so the musician of the unit has got a giant horn, but we've had to, it's quite awkward to paint because of the straps that are all on it. So we do all these little teeth first of all, and then I'll show you on the actual horn itself. Um, the, every single one of these models have got like goat or devil horns as well, and they all go in different directions. And we've painted horns before on different tutorials, but the, the way that I do it is I paint the entire thing. I normally would wash it and then I'll paint the highlights in very thin lines leaving some of the, the Zandri dust in the recesses and basically paint up to the tip of the, the horns. So here you can see I'm painting this in stages. I'm doing the middle part and then I'll do the two outer bits. But it's just breaking down this horn into different stages. Next highlight for the bone is Ushabti or Shabti bone. And because of the camera setup, the exposure wasn't right, so you can't really see the highlights as much. I tone it, I tone it down in a little bit just so that you can see that see it a little bit better. But you can see what I'm doing here. I'm leaving some of the Zandri dust on these horns. I'm just painting lines from the base of the horn all the way to the tip, and just leaving lines in between that are a little bit darker. And I'm going to just do the same sort of textured highlighting on the horn. It's got a bit of texture on this part anyway, so I've just painted that in with a few extras. And then when I switch it around and start doing the end of it, I've, I've moved the brush and do it in a different direction. But this adds loads of texture to it. It doesn't look like it's like a bit of plastic. It looks more like it's an actual natural horn with the texture that's on it. The final highlight for all of this bone is Screaming Skull. And we're going to do this in exactly the same way. It's just painting less and less each time we do a, an, a different highlight. We just basically use less paint. And you can see the paint is nice and thin from the palette. I'm only using a tiny bit, but I'm making sure that I'm mixing it with enough water so that it flows off the brush. And you can see on the brush itself, it's only about halfway down the body 
of the brush so it doesn't get clogged up in the ferrule at the end it doesn't ruin the brush in any way shape or form but it's still got enough paint on there that it doesn't dry up immediately you can see there the the, uh, the lines on the horns definitely show up a little bit better there and I've just knocked down the exposure here so you can see there is a differentiation between Zandri, Shabti and Screaming Skull in the colours. It just doesn't show up too well. It's a bit awkward when you're doing these tutorials because you've got to try and hold the, the model underneath the camera, try and paint at the same time and not get your head and shadows in the way. So you almost paint, very, it's very difficult. I'll, I'll just say that, it's very difficult to do painting tutorials. So anyone who does them, fair play. Right, we're just going to tidy up now, we're going to do the browns. So the first colour, obviously I primed them with Rhinox Hide. So if you're going to do your models with a black primer, then you'll need to go over all of the, all the leather areas with this Rhinox Hide first of all. But for me, it was just basically going over and tidying up any areas where I'd gone over. So you can see I'm just going over the braces. It's got straps on the actual horn itself. There's some belt buckles and little leathery bits all over. So just make sure you go around and paint all of that with a Rhinox hide. And then we'll start highlighting that up. Okay, so once that's done and dried, we're gonna use Doom Ball Brown. So this is more of a pinkier, reddish brown. It's, it's nice, but the next color up where it goes to tusk or fur is sometimes a little bit too pink in my opinion. I'm using it on these because it does brighten them up and then when we knock it back with the shade, it, it blends it a little bit more. But if I was gonna be doing tusk or fur and not washing it afterwards, I generally mix it with a bit of this Doom Ball Brown just because it's too bright for me. But I'm just painting, it's almost between a layer and an edge highlight. I'm just going to go for the raised areas and the top of each area just so that it's brightened up and it's not as dark as the Rhinox hide. Obviously the wash will dull it down right at the end anyway. But some of these areas like the straps on the horn just be really neat and just paint the actual top of the strap. And at this point you really want to be careful because if you go onto the horn it, there's a lot of work going back in to try and tidy that back up and highlight it up to the, the brighter colour that it is already. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the final highlight, which is the Tuscore fur. As I said, this is more of a, it's a very, very pinky brown, uh, more on the pink side than the brown side for me, to be fair. But we're just going to do this sparingly along the top of the belt areas, the belt, um, well, the belt, the <laughs> leathery area, and also the wristband straps and the uh, the rope that's tied around the horn. So you can see I'm not, I'm not putting too much on, I'm just very lightly putting it on as a final highlight. Now, in, in terms of this uh, wash, it, uh, the, the reason why I've done the wash afterwards and the reason it speeds up the process is, I mean, we're doing all the steps that I would normally do. Normally I would base coat the model, like base coat every area. So that's the first step we did for all the skin and bone and all of that. Then I would wash the model uh, so that it gets like darkened all the shadows are put in and then I'll spend time highlighting each piece but then I wouldn't put a wash on afterwards because the highlighting that you've done is just um, it's darkened and it doesn't look the way I would normally want it to look the reason I've done it this way is I can be a little bit more careless when it comes to actually highlighting I can do the base colors I can do all the highlighting and any mistakes or any areas which look a little bit rough they just get tied I'd say they get tidied up they kind of get covered by the wash. The wash basically makes them a little bit more dirty at the end. It blends some of the highlighting that you've done together. So anything that's really precise is almost lost. But if you're being a little bit more sloppy and a little bit more careless, it's probably better. It, at least the way that I look at it, I feel like it's a little bit better. I can get 10 of these done much quicker. I just took the base coats on, quickly highlight, and then put a wash on at the end and they're done. If I was gonna be doing it the other way around, I spend much more time trying to get the highlights more precise and more perfect than I would do with this method. So it depends what you wanna do. You're doing probably the same steps 
but you are doing the same steps just in a different order so you switch it around if you want to make them look a little bit tidier do the wash after you've done the base coats and then do your highlights uh, so in terms of what we just did there literally just painting the belt buckle with black and then i'm just going around with lead belcher here and i'm not I'm dragging the brush over all of the belt buckle I'm just going around the edges and you can see I'm lifting the brush up a little bit and putting it back on just to give it a little bit of a scratched finish so it looks like it's armor that's been chipped and battered and used a little bit the, the rest of the arm, army the vestigors are covered in armor so there's a bit more black on those these ungors are very lightly armored so there's not as much going on so that is the model done in terms of all of the painting you can see that all of the areas are done it's still not looking like it's got too much contrast in it and now we're going to use the mix of Lamian Medium, Norn Oil and Agrax Earthshade. So it's 50% Lamian Medium, it's quite thin and then the other 50% is mixed up with Norn Oil and Agrax and that's 25% uh, for each of those. So it's a very thinned wash which means you don't get the tide marks or you don't get as many tide marks as if you were just going to put a wash on there and it's also not as heavy if you just took agrax and put it over the model at the end it would look really dark it would look like the army shader uh, army painter uh, shades that you can get so it's a quick way of painting and finishing your models but it's not necessarily the, the greatest finish on them this is basically an army painter wash but i've thinned it down with norn oil at uh, no, no, and medium but you can see it's going into all those recesses when it dries it's much darker you've already painted the highlight so you've got some brightness in there and you can thin this even more if you wanted to you could do like 70 percent limey and medium and you can do two coats of this in, and build it up gradually if you really wanted to make sure it was as um you know you wanted to get some of those highlights showing a little bit more i'm not too fussed because i've got so many of these to paint i just need them done so colors are on washes on and then when it's dried it's finished and I can chuck it onto the base. So that is the entire model done. I've got another 20 of these to go and then I've got 30 gores so I'm hoping that this tutorial has helped you. The final result it looks I quite like it I like the final result like I say it's not as nice as the bestie gores and the heroes and all the other models that are in the rest of the army but this took substantially lost less time I didn't have to worry too much about all of the highlighting that was on there so it was quite a nice one to do I've got different colors of these two paints so obviously this is the gray skinned ungo I've got some with more um, like peachy flesh tones I've got some more like uh, Zandri dust and, and desert colors which I'm going to be using for skin tones as well so if you're interested in those let me know what sort of skin tones you want I've done lots of skin tones in the past for the videos but it is quite an important well I feel like it's an important area of painting is knowing your skin tones and your hair colors and all of the different leathers and things and we're just going to go through them with our tutorials again thanks very much for watching this video I hope it's helped if it has please click the like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and other than that I'll see you on the next one